didn't you come to my dinner party last night? Now I got all these leftover dirty dishes I have to do by myself. Tonight I'm going deep, how to make new friends. And how to do the dishes. This is a how-to show about things you think you know how to do. Because simple things are more complex than they seem. I'm David Reese. Let's do this. Behold the platonic ideal of a dirty dish. We have old eggs, old meat, old miscellaneous grease and oils, old oatmeal, and my favorite, old cream spinach. I do have a dishwasher, but because I live alone, I use my dishwasher to store my Tupperware and my dolls. I wash dishes by hand. Dishwashers aren't energy efficient and they use electricity. I want to learn the best possible hand dishwashing practices. And then at the end of this episode, I'm gonna go John Henry against my own dishwasher and we're gonna have a man versus machine dishwash off. And I better win because I hate machines. Mmm, look at the food stuck on those dishes. It disgusts me and yet I can't turn away. Why does food stick to dishes? This is Dr. Simon Billinge, a professor of material science at Columbia University. Material science combines the study of physics and chemistry, and I figured since dishes are made of physics and food is made of chemistry, you'd be the perfect person to talk to. Here's what I want to know. When I cook food, why does it stick and why is it so hard to get off and why does everything have to be so hard in this life? It's bonds, chemical bonds. Okay. What happens when you cook the food is the atoms in the food stick to the atoms in the pan because you make them very hot. What is it about heating food that makes everything stick? Because the food starts sharing its electrons. Right. I've got my food nucleus, my food nucleus, they're sharing an electron. Right, this. So although this guy hates this guy, right. they both love the electron. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've been so in those situations. Yeah, now what we need is heat. Okay. That was amazing. The electron gets more and more agitated. Because we've added energy? We've added energy. Okay. It escapes. And then it looks for another atom. What it finds is the pan, oh, the, the other electron. This it, electron, this dirty cheating electron, gets all hot and bothered and goes out and has an affair with a pan? Totally. Really? Totally. That's how it works? Yeah. Okay, what have we here? This is an egg from a chicken. Correct. Do you want an apron? Not everybody gets to wear one of these. Woo! Okay? Got it. So I need you to understand this is a tremendous honor, and I need you to bring your best self to this. All right. I feel more powerful already. That's good, Simon. That's very good. You know how some pots and pans are made of copper? Well, Simon took two pieces of copper and dipped them in egg whites. Then he placed the pieces on top of each other and put them on a hot plate. This symbolizes an egg being cooked in a copper pot, right? This is correct. OK. There's a lot of water in there. In the egg white? Yeah, and we kind of want the water to come out because the water gets in the way, actually. A lot of times when you cook, the water will boil. It'll form a little vapor layer in between the food and the pan. That would be good for me then because then the food wouldn't stick to the pan. Yeah. Is that really true? Yes. Why isn't everyone on the earth doing that? Because you love that delicious brown sear. On I don't the give a about state. anything about the actual experience of eating food. I just need nutrients in my body, and if I could take nothing but pills, I would do that. We waited for our copper egg sandwich to cook up. And when it was done, two pieces of copper, and they're stuck together because the egg is acting as a glue. Yeah. But really what's happening is the egg electrons are joined with the, the copper, copper atoms. Yeah. When it cools off, why don't all the electrons go home to their proper nucleus? Because they found a new, like you said, they, they're in a new relationship. And they stay in that relationship even when the heat and the energy goes back down to normal. Right, right. They've just started a new life. They started a new life together. That's effed up. But once these atomic bonds are formed, how do you break them, Simon? If it's not burned on, you did it at low temperature. Just, right. You can just get use water, and the water molecules will work their way in. They won't make a bond, but they'll just weaken the bond, and it will come off. So the problem with water is it has a very high surface tension. So the water molecules kind of stick to each other, and that actually prevents the water molecules from burrowing in and, and, and breaking up those relationships. Why is water such a piece of so you put a little bit of detergent in, and that actually lowers the surface tension of the water. So it allows the water molecules to actually get into tight, tight spaces. Is detergent like lubricant for water? Yes. But it's still water that does the actual cleaning. Yeah. Because the actual cleaning is breaking these atomic bonds. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Think of a dirty dish as the hottest nightclub in town. Water wants to get in, but he's a little too chubby. So soap helps ease him through the doorway. But never forget, it's water up in that club. 
Add water while cooking to create a vapor barrier. This will minimize sticking and taste. You know how British people, all their food is just boiled? Yeah. Is that because you hate doing dishes? And so uh, you just add water to everything? No, it's just because we don't know anything about good eating. Oh, all right. What about when stuff is so stuck on that soap and water can't get the job done? What about when you need to physically scrape? This man is O'Neill Tootsis, and he is paid to scrape barnacles off of boats because barnacles slow down boats, and slow boats are for losers. Exhibit A, crusty oatmeal. I brought O'Neill one of my gunked up bowls. We brought it in the carry-on luggage when we flew down to Florida. People thought we were crazy, but we were just having fun. Exhibit B, a boat covered in... Crusty barnacles. Crusty barnacles. Oysters, too. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, oyster. that's an oyster. That's an oyster. How would I clean this using these techniques? You'd probably want to get it wet first. We usually do this underwater, but for the circumstance, we'll, uh... He's, what he's too polite to say is we didn't have the money <laughs> or the insurance policies, nor I the license to actually get in the water. Okay, what does the soaking do? Soaking will just soften up the texture of the oatmeal. Step number two is... You would take a large scraper, right? And you'd come along the boat. You don't want to angle against the boat and hurt the integrity of the, the paint. Okay. You kind of want to just go at an angle. Right. Can I try the scraper on this part Absolutely. of the boat? Absolutely. Wonderful. Okay, I love that. Wonderful. That was really, that really is, satisfying. That is exceptional. So next, you get your typical five-in-one. Okay. You get it at any hardware store. What you're going to do is you chip away, and sometimes you're just... You're hitting the center of it, which kind of loosens up the whole structure of the calcium. Oh, so you should aim for the middle? You kind of bang it in the center, and then and then swipe it. Like... Yes. Oh, did you see that? Exactly. Did you see that? Obviously, Mo. Did you see that? <laughs> this is like a whole oyster bar right here. Look at this. Yeah, it makes you think twice about eating them. Well, I didn't need to hear that. <laughs> Coming up, you may think you know how to clean your dishes, but we're just getting started. Oh, and your sponge can kill you. Wait a minute. Is I that, the, is that, that the that biotoxin that kills fish is in my yeah, nose now? exactly. Oh, okay, great. I'd like to share something disgusting with you now. Do I have your permission? A 2011 study found that 86% of kitchen sponges have mold, and 77% tested positive for coliform bacteria. So what's the secret to a nice, clean sponge that stays clean? Welcome to Tarpon Springs, Florida, an all-American community founded by Greek sponge divers. This is Sophia Constantine, and she runs the Natural Sponge Headquarters, and I love her scooter. Now tell me everything you know about sponges. Go. A sponge is the simplest form of a multi-celled animal. There's a tissue that surrounds the sponge called gurry. A few reasons. Gurry? Gurry. Okay. They like to grow in calm, clean water. Okay. They naturally grow in the Aegean, the Mediterranean, and the Gulf of Mexico. They have been used in human society for 2,500 years. So we're done. Turn the boat around. Good job, everybody. Greek immigrants have been harvesting sponges in Florida for more than 100 years. The man you're looking at is Frank Note, a sponge diver. Oh, 12 pounds? This is so you can just walk along the bottom of the water. That helps. And they naturally put off a toxin. They don't want fish and stuff living in them. Sophia, I'm done. All right. I don't want any more information about sponges. All right, all right, fine. Let's do it. Let's do it. That is old school. Whoa! Whoa, whoa, whoa! The first thing he does is find a sponge. Then he cuts it off, but he leaves something called the holdfast on the rock or the coral that the sponge was attached to. And this allows a new sponge to grow in its place. He got one. He got one. Is that what that is? Yep, he got his sponge. Woo! Oh. First of all, that only took 30 seconds. What is it? This is a wolf sponge. This is what they look like alive. This is the skin. That's the gurry. This is, uh, yeah, this is the, the live membrane. This piece will die. This black skin and the meaty part of it will decay. And how long until it's no longer alive? Within two days, that black skin will be gone. Really? And, and it'll just be the starts, exoskeleton. You'll be seeing the, the skeletal structure, yes. That is the sponge. Right. I got to say, it does not look like an animal to me. It smells like uh, seafood. Does it? Yeah. A little bit. Like raw sea... Oh, wait. They got spurs on them is what they call it. Wait a minute. Is that, the, is that, that. the top biotoxin that kills fish is in my yeah, nose now? Yeah, exactly. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, well, this has been a great episode. <laughs>
I'll see you in heaven, I guess. <laughs> After harvesting, the sponges sit for three days while the gurry decomposes. It smells delicious. Then they're pressure washed. So this is a... This is a clean sponge. You can tell the difference between a natural sponge and a synthetic sponge just by looking at it. The natural sponge, their airways are all connected. All those airways and chambers are all connected. So when you squeeze a sponge, you flush everything out. So therefore, mold and bacteria do not. That's not an issue with natural sponges, but it's good to soak them in baking soda and water. But with my kitchen sponge, when I squeeze my kitchen sponge, stuff comes out. Yeah, but there's still stuff inside that's all. So these holes in a natural sponge go all the way through. Yes. And you're saying the holes in a synthetic kitchen sponge, they're kind of like fake holes. They're fake holes, yeah. You hate synthetic sponges. Right. Everyone who uses synthetic sponges should be rounded up and yeah. walked off the plank. Absolutely. Remember, sponges are animals. Who's a good boy? <laughs> You're my little buddy. They are basically the hardest working pets you'll ever own. Although they are dead. Coming up, I meet a woman tasked with preventing an alien invasion of our planet. My job is the Planetary Protection Officer for NASA. What do you do for a living? Dishwashing combat against a machine whose sole purpose was to wash dishes. So it wasn't enough for me just to be faster. I also wanted to be more efficient, using less water and less energy. I wanted to make that machine feel utterly humiliated. This is Dr. Rainer Stamminger, or as I call him, Dr. Dishwasher. He's a professor of household and appliance technology at the University of Bonn in Germany. He spent years researching how to do dishes using the least amount of water with the best possible results. And he's written many, many papers on just that topic. Basically, ich liebe dich, Herr Dishwasser. He agreed to analyze my dishwashing technique via transatlantic internet video conference call. You know those always look and sound perfect. This is my kitchen. These are my camera. Wave hello, say hello. Hi, hey, folks. Wave hello, Corey. OK, so let me show you how I usually wash dishes. Sponge, soap. Get the sponge wet, put the soap on the sponge, and then just start scrubbing. Keep running the water until everything's off. Rinse, put in the rack. Boom. What do you think? I think you are doing it as most of the Americans are doing it. Well, I'm a proud American. That's how we wash dishes. What am I doing wrong? You're using much too much uh, water. So what's the right way? This rack from the second sink. Both of the food to put in the waste bin. Everything into the garbage? Everything into the garbage. And the left one to put in hot water, only half full. The soap. How much? Not too much. The right thing is cold water. After the sinks were ready, Dr. Dishwasher told me to commence washing. I started with the cleanest items, working my way up to the more disgusting ones. Why do I rinse with cold water and not hot water? Hot water needs energy, and cold water is sufficient, so we don't need to have hot water there. Cold water is just more energy efficient. Yes. And when do I know when to add more detergent? When you see that there are no small foam bubbles. So when I see bubbles, I'm still good. It's OK? Looks good. This is getting pretty. Uh, it may be time to change this water. So now I'm, I'm going to drain it. So Americans need to get over this idea that the only way to clean something is to run water over it. It's OK to put it in the water and then scrub it and then rinse it. Yeah. To avoid bacterial contamination from your dish towel, air dry your dishes whenever possible. Is this how you wash your dishes every day? No, I'm using a dishwasher. Ah! I was really depressed at this point because I figured dishwashers were making humans obsolete. But then I thought, if I could find a machine that could outclean a dishwasher, team up with that machine, maybe even get married to that machine, my new machine spouse and I could crush a dishwasher under our boot heel. So I went to NASA. Your job is? My job is the Planetary Protection Officer for NASA. The Planetary Protection Officer for NASA. What do you do for a living? This is the Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland. And this is Cassie Conley. She has the high stakes job of making sure all NASA spacecraft are free of dirt and bacteria. We're actually protecting all of the planets in this solar system all of the time. That is, when we send spacecraft out right. and when we bring spacecraft back to Earth, we're concerned about making sure that the planets that we go to 
don't get contaminated with things that would interfere with the activities that we want to do at those planets. And then also, for bringing samples back to Earth, we really don't want to cause the Andromeda strain. I would say this is a pop culture reference about a movie that all of you are too young to remember. Uh, possibly, yes. Yeah. Why don't so you we summarize briefly to that camera the plot of the Andromeda strain? So the Andromeda strain is a movie in which a spacecraft went out and came back and was contaminated with organisms that then caused major problems with diseases on Earth. Basically, Cassie is keeping us safe from an alien invasion. We should all pay her $20 just to be nice. And this is the... That's actually an oven that we use to bake spacecraft, but... Um... OK, so this is an oven. Yes, it's actually a vacuum oven. It sucks the air out of the oven, as well as putting heat in. If it sucks all the air out of the oven, what is it that gets hot? The light will hit the surfaces of the spacecraft, whatever inside, and make that warm. Are you heating spacecraft in here to clean them? Not this oven right now, okay. but we could. One of the most disgusting things about NASA is their unfettered idealism. For instance, Cassie showed me a place where humans and machines work side by side to make things really, really clean. It's called a clean room, and it just about made me sick. So this is an optical clean room. An optical clean room. They're testing lasers from one of our uh, spacecraft going, I think, staying in Earth orbit or going on the shuttle. OK. You worry about particles that could get on the optics and stop the laser from You're going You're talking about like little pieces of dust floating through the air. Little pieces of dust, really tiny pieces of dust, pieces of dust that are 1,000th th the diameter of your hair. So little, They got tiny. that stuff out of here? Yes, they do. We have filters that filter the air, and so there's air changing, flowing through here all the time, and that filters out all the particles. In addition, the fil some of the filters also are filter out organic molecules. Okay. So in this case, smell is a contaminant. Because a smell would indicate the presence of organic molecules and compounds? Precisely. No perfume, no hairspray, no deodorant. Hold on. These guys aren't wearing deodorant? It gets a little smelly after a while, which actually means that they should go out and take a shower and come back in. None of those guys are wearing deodorant right now. Probably the not. deodorant would introduce contaminants, right. and that would mess up the laser communication. Precisely. Coming up, man versus machine, human versus robot, hope versus despair, life versus death. Damn it. Tell you the truth, my trip to NASA kind of freaked me out because it was like, I'm never going to get my dishes that clean. I can't fit one of these gigantic ovens in my house or pay a bunch of guys in spacesuits to go over everything with their weird cloths and rags. How clean do my dishes have to be? What is your dishwashing practice? To scrub the dishes a lot. Mechanical removal is the best mechanism for bioburden reduction. And what is bioburden? Just... Bioburden means all those little the invisible things that are on your dishes. So you scrub a lot. I scrub the dishes a lot. It depends on what, you're, what you need to be clean, how you need things to be, what the definition of clean is. You need to decide before you even wash your dishes what clean means to you relative to your own preferences. Exactly. And then you pick a strategy based on that. Precisely. That's exactly what spacecraft engineers are really important for them to figure out. You guys have to define your goal before you even know the strategy that you're going to employ to achieve that goal. Absolutely. I always thought, I'm going to clean my dishes, and that means that when I'm done cleaning them, they'll be like brand new, like fresh out of the box. There'll be nothing on them. But and then I was like, that's actually a lot of work. Yes. Maybe I'll clean them enough so that I don't die. That's the difference between Viking and Pathfinder. Viking and Pathfinder are? Two Mars landers. OK. The Viking landers were the ones we first sent to Mars. And we said, they have to be really clean. We're going to figure out how to make them really, really clean, put them in an oven and bake them. The and Pathfinder. Mars exploration rovers, we already knew something about the surface of Mars. Oh, you know, it's pretty It doesn't have to be that clean. And then you don't bake them. So I started out as a dishwashing... Viking. But now, because I'm getting lazy and I'm more or less healthy, I might turn into a dishwashing... Rover. A dishwashing rover. OK. So according to NASA, clean is a relative term. But that doesn't mean you can let your dishes sit around with a bunch of bio burdens all over them. According to my friends and family, it was time for me to do my dishes. For heavily soiled cooking pots and pans, soak with hot water and a drop of soap immediately after use. Use a light scraping motion of steadily increasing angles to remove bio burdens. Fill one basin halfway with hot water for washing and a second basin halfway with cold water for rinsing. Don't add soap to your sponge. Add soap directly to your hot water using less than you think you need. A foamy sink is not good for washing. For hippie authenticity and reduced bacterial risk, use all natural sponges. Clean your natural sponge once a month by soaking it in a solution of baking soda and water. Starting with your least soiled items, wash in the hot water, dip in the cold water to rinse, then move to a rack for air drying. If your wash basin is getting truly disgusting, 
you can refill it with fresh hot water. I was ready to test my skills against my own dishwasher and prove that I could do the dishes faster and better while using less water. So I took about a month's worth of dirty dishes and split them up. Half were for me and half were for my dishwasher. Let's go. I recruited our production manager, Paulina, to help the dishwasher with tasks that it couldn't do itself because it didn't have arms. Look at how she's loading this dishwasher. Have you ever loaded a dishwasher before? To prove that I could use less water than the devil contraption, I measured everything I used in a two-gallon watering can. Okay, now it begins. Man versus machine. I washed each item in soapy hot water and then rinsed in cool, clean water. Really, the number one thing is scraping. That's half the game, at least. Whew. As the minutes ticked by, the pressure was getting to me. Come on. Damn it. This sucks. But I persevered. And in the end... <laughs> Woo! I did it. This piece of junk's still rinsing. I'm better at washing dishes than a machine. And I used a gallon less water than my model of dishwasher uses. Meanwhile, this thing is still going. And we should admit that, yeah, this is not a new dishwasher. <laughs> Let's not get too many shots of that dishwasher. It's maybe the nastiest thing in my house, other than my refrigerator and my collection of broken toilets. Then finally, the dishwasher stopped. Paulina, your dishes are filthy. Look how dirty that is. Oh, look at this spatula. <laughs> oh, busted. Okay, so my dishwasher is super old, and maybe modern dishwashers could do a better job and use less water than it did. Well, I'll tell you one thing. To all you modern dishwashers, bring it on. I'll be standing right here, proud and tall, a human washing dishes. Humans are better than machines. Goodbye.